code or RP. Due to our recent expansion, we offer units that range in size from as small as a bedroom closet to as big as a one-car garage. All of our units are inside and climate controlled with 24-hour access and security. Our leases run month to month, so you're not locked into a long-term commitment, giving you the flexibility to move your belongings out the minute you purchase your new home. Stop by today or give us a call. 530-8003. That's 530-8003. Jessup Premium Storage. The cool, clean, ease kit. This is Sammy Dixon at the all-new Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. If you haven't had a chance to come see our new state-of-the-art showroom, then there's no better time than right now. While you're here, take advantage of huge savings on new Ford trucks. Get more than $10,000 off on select new F-150s while they last. You must hurry. They're going fast. Over $10,000 off on the best-selling truck in America for 39 straight years. You can also take advantage of money-saving low, low interest rates on new and certified pre-owned vehicles. Our new bigger showroom means more inventory and that means bigger savings for you come to the house at good service bill and buy from mike birch ford and we'll give you five free oil changes following 36,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty if you're looking for an incredible deal on a new or pre-owned vehicle from the dealer who has always put you first stop the search call the all-new mike birch ford and black Shear. this is sammy dixon saying thank you thank you very much for your business and good morning to you. You're listening to the Big Dog, WIFO-FM in Jessup, 105.5 in your FM dial. But Hubbard here with you. Thursday morning, 28th day of April, 69 degrees here in southeast Georgia. Very well cloudiness today. 20% chance of showers with a high near 87. The Omaha River level, 8.9 feet and falling. It is now time for the world-famous Butch and Bob Show, brought to you by Parker Insurance and Realty on Macon Street in downtown Jessup. By just a premium storage out here on the Waycross Highway and by Mike Birch Ford in Blackshear. And Bob, the campaign season continues and we got a special guest in this morning. I've got a familiar face, you know, we always see France with the Genesville the Chamber for so many years, but now she's got a new hat on, the Canna hat. But before we get to Canna, I just want to tell you, I've enjoyed working with you Thank all these you, years at Chamber. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. Always you did good. Fun. Thank you. I appreciate uh, that. I really do. Uh, you did a great job with Chamber. So, Thank you. Know. Thank you, you tell so someone much. Someone is passionate about Wayne County, and um, and you are. Yes, I am. And that's the reason why I think you did such one of the many reasons why you did such a great job there at the Chamber of Commerce. Thank you. As director. Thank we you. We rely on information. You always got us the information. That's what I appreciate. Yes. So, yes. You know, absolutely. I always got the email. Always got the things. Always got. So I appreciate it. But, right. but here you are as a candidate for uh, clerk of court. That's right. An office that you're a little familiar with because you worked in there. That's for right. Some time. So tell us about. You, while you're pursuing this okay. office in, uh, well, it could be over by August. Uh, the general primary is in May. That's All three right. counts on the, the Republican ballot. If there's a runoff, I think it's like uh, July, July, something, July something like I that. I think it is, yeah. yes. Uh -huh. but it'll be it, won't it won't run to November. It'll be over with before then. So. That's exactly right. So tell us about why you decide to enter this race and why you want to be clerk of court. Okay. Well, first of all, my name is Francis Bennett Jurgen. Uh, in fact, um, I do have four names, and they're all special to me. My name is Francis Irene Bennett Jurgen, and I like to say that because my first three names were given to me by a special man who was my daddy, and my last name was given to me by another special man who was my husband, Bert Jurgen. My parents are Patsy and Stetson Bennett, and uh, I have a heritage of public service uh, my granddaddy was clerk of court years ago, and then my daddy stepped in and ran for the office and was elected and was the clerk for many more years. And I grew up knowing about the clerk's office, working in the clerk's office, like in the summertime during high school years and that sort of thing. And most recently, uh, the last four years that he was in office, I went in and I helped him. Um, he was unfortunate that he had um, was in a car wreck and broke his back and his neck. And uh, so that kind of uh, made a change in his life. And so I was there to help him and um, uh, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed it. Watched him as he did what he did as far as helping people and that sort of thing. And Butch, like you said, I, I, I'm passionate about Wayne County. I have a com compassion for people in Wayne County and I care about the people in Wayne County and I want to be there to not only administer the, the court um, system, uh, but I want to be there for for the folks of Wayne County. I want to uh, 
have an office that is uh, an atmosphere of um, um, caring for them when they walk in the door and just run the office more efficiently. I went to um, a banquet last night and I'll share this with you a little bit that uh, I spoke at this banquet uh, and it was the clerk's banquet. Uh, this is where the all the clerks all over Georgia go for training in the spring. It's on St. Simon's every year and the last thing they have is a banquet. And at this banquet, they award an award. It's the clerk of the court, clerk of the year award. And this was started about 31 years ago. And the first recipient of this award was my daddy. And that award carries his name. It's called the Stetson F. Bennett Jr. Clerk of the Year Award. And uh, so it, it still has that name. So anyway, I was there last night with all these clerks who are all very, very good friends of mine because I've worked with them. Um, but I was talking to one of the ladies who'd been there about 20 years and she said, you know, even as long as I have been in this office, things are changing tremendously every day and I have to keep up with it. Well, that's one of the things I want to do is I'm curious enough to find out what's available to make our office the best in the state. Um, you know, as I work with the chamber and I've been around the county with Leadership Wayne and a lot of different um, programs, I see where we excel in agriculture, you know, in industry and just a whole bunch of things in our county. Well, I want our clerk's office to be the same. I want to bring it up to a standard that was established years ago. Uh, so that it will be the best clerk's office. It will be respected in the state and it will be respected in our county with our citizens. So um, anyway, that's kind of why I am running. I wanted to run the last time, and uh, but things didn't work out and that was fine because, and I, I look back and I think about it and I think, you know, that was not in God's plan for me to run and uh, I didn't run. He put me in a position at the chamber where I've met a lot of, lot of nice people, a lot of, made a lot of good friends. And I think I was able to work, and like you say, have, uh, show my passion for Wayne County, uh, for people to see it and not just be able to tell it, but people can actually see what, I, what I've done and will know that I am the same person as I was yesterday, same person today and the same person I'll be tomorrow. And uh, my biggest thing is caring about the folks of Wayne County. So does that answer your question, Bob? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people, unfortunately, don't know what a clerk court does. So explain yes. what a clerk court does. Okay. You know. Well, you know, um, when I meet people out of uh, Wayne County, you know, and they say, where are you from? I say, well, I'm from Wayne County. And uh, I said, you know, that's the hub of the universe. That's where everything's going on. So or as think, your sister Vi says, God's country. That's exactly right. right. That's exactly right. Um, or the paradise of the world, you know, that comes from daddy. But, uh, but anyway, um, I feel like the clerk's office is the hub of the county. This is where people go in and out, in and out. They're filing documents that are court documents, real estate documents. I would encourage people to go tour the clerk's office because most people do not know what goes on. They don't know where that big vault is in the back that have these books that weigh about 50 pounds a piece that have documents that date way back from the 1800s. And to go in and see those documents and to see how they were handwritten, you know, it's just amazing. But the clerk's office administers the court system too. You know, uh, we record, um, court proceedings, uh, we record real estate. Uh, there are some um, auxiliary services that the clerk's office does. That's like issuing passports, uh, child support payments come through the clerk's office. Uh, there are the courts that uh, are administered are superior court and you've got civil and criminal. You've got state court, you've got civil and criminal. You've got juvenile court, you've got drug court. Uh, and a lot of, you know, there's a lot of working parts to the clerk's office. And the key, I think, to the, um, a successful court clerk's office is, first of all, knowing that this clerk's office belongs to the people of Wayne County, first of all, and that these documents that are in that clerk's office 
are the people's documents, the court documents, you know, no matter what it is, it's, it has something to, to do with uh, the people in Wayne County. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's kind of a nutshell as to what the clerk's office does. Um, one thing that was told last night at the banquet too was a lady said, you know, um, and she was talking to all the clerks, she said, I know people come in your office every day and tell you, thank you for all that you do. Well, they don't, you know, it's just one of those things that you go to work, you do what you got to do. And, it, you know, it, it's just that sort of thing. So, um, but it, it is a, um, a, an interesting job. You said talked about child support payments. Um, do they still go through the clerk or court's office, or are they automatically put on a, uh, a debit type card these days? Uh, how does it work with well, the child support? In, it in changes the, in the court system. The judge, when uh, he awards the child support, he'll instruct the uh, parent that's paying the child support whether to uh, pay it through the clerk's office or to pay it through the child support office. Right and. Uh, Usually, most of the time, people will pay it through the ch uh, clerk's office because at one time there was a fee, which I think there probably still is, when you go through the child support. I think it's like a $2 fee or something like that. So they were saving their $2, okay. you know, and so they would do it through the clerk's office. So the clerk's office still does it according to what the judge's instructions are. Mm -hmm. okay. Exactly. Right. They do. They do. Sticking on that topic, the one complaint I've heard from some people that, you know, that used to be able to go down there and get your child support payment walk in the clerk court's office it was there but now they're mailing it is that correct and some people said they're upset with that because they said uh, i don't know if yeah i guess everything gets lost in the mail what i've heard you know checks have been lost in the mail and all of a sudden they don't have their checks so, right. uh, right. is, are you familiar with how that's working well now? i have been told that and um i do know that that child support check is very important to the custodial parent a lot of times when i was there the custodial parent would be sitting in the parking lot waiting for the pay paying parent to pay the child support because once that child support is received in the office it is processed immediately and a check is um, printed for the custodial parent and a lot of times that custodial parent would wait till the paying parent left went and got the money so that you know they could do whatever they need to do with the money whether it was to buy shoes for the child pay the light bill food, uh, whatever. Uh, but I did understand that a policy had been changed, that the child support payments were mailed, uh, and that there were some concerns and challenges with that because one, there was a delay in uh, the custodial parent receiving that money. Uh, so, you know, that might not have been the best um, policy, but I do understand that it has been changed back now. I think about maybe two or three weeks ago that it has been changed. Is it an option for folks? I've known some folks it is an that, that can tell them, I'm going to stop by and pick it up, yes. or can you mail it to me? Yes. I know it's, you, a lot of times it's been up to the uh, custodial parent. Exactly. It okay. is an option. Okay. And I will tell you this, that um, I know in the past when I was there, um, on Christmas Eve, the office would close about lunchtime. Well, I stayed, and I'm not really tooting my own horn, I'm just telling you how it was. I would stay until the paying parent would come and pay that child support um, because, you know, you kind of know who's due. Uh, and because sometimes they wouldn't come until three or four o'clock in the afternoon. And I think sometimes the mindset may have been, well, you know, they're going to be closed, but I can make the effort, but that check won't be received until after the holidays. So, you know, I would stay and there would be some that would come in. And so I called the custodial parent and said, I've got your money if you want to come get it. And I think that was so important because it's Christmas and I would never want a child to be without Christmas because that money was sitting in the clerk's office. Y'all go ahead, I mean, you said, was say y'all were back when you worked there and currently right now. Right. Uh, y'all go ahead and give out the money or they, the court's office, clerk or court's office, go ahead and gives, gives out the money before a check is cleared? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm so, sure I keep hearing about the, the offices, the, the, I've heard the ass. Mm -hmm. The two of the cans you and Pat are talking about updating the technology. Yes. Is it that bad? I mean, it is. It, you know, um, I know they scan documents. At least I, I'm, uh, I'm sure they do. I know we did that when I was there. We would scan the court records, um, and um, 
but I do understand that there's some challenges with emails and communication and connecting with um, uh, some state agencies and that sort of thing. Um, you know, everybody's issued an email address, and uh, I think it's very important that you know your email address. And Use everybody. All the uh, employees. Employees, okay. uh, Yes, all yeah. the employees have an email address. Uh, and uh, so, like I say, I think it's very important that you, you know, you, you know that email address and, uh, and you use it. You use the technology that's available. Well, I think Wayne County is fortunate. We have three candidates running for clerk of court. Uh, one of them is the incumbent, right. you know, who's worked there for a long time in the clerk of court's office. And then, of course, you got Pat, uh, who's working in there. And, of course, you've worked there in the past. So uh, we've got three people who are experienced at the clerk's office and uh and every one of y'all seem to be just fine decent folks well thank you i appreciate that <laughs> <laughs> i mean it, wayne county's a winner okay yes yeah. absolutely absolutely um i would like to say that uh, if you had a word that might describe me other than compassionate and uh caring and that sort of thing is uh that i uh am connectable I, I can connect with resources from the past. I connect with uh, the citizens of Wayne County through my compassion and through my empathy. Uh, and I connect with legislators. I connect with other clerks. Uh, I just, you know, I have the resources to connect and find help. That there's never a, um, uh, a situation that can't be halfway solved without trying to find somebody who can connect. Is Clerk of Court's office um, 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 Republican, Democrat, is it partisan? Or it, is it is partisan. So it all y'all running for Republican yes, ticket? Yes, we're okay. all on the Republican. And this election in May is very, very, very important to us because whoever wins in May is the clerk. So, you know, the, you have the primary to decide who's going to be in the general election for uh, with the two different um, parties, well, there's nobody in the, on the Democratic ticket. It's just a shame that it's a, a partisan it, office there. It should be, mm -hmm. you know, nonpartisan like judges. That's right. And because uh, folks who want to go there and vote on the Democrat ticket won't have the opportunity to vote for clerk of court. That's, uh, that's exactly just a shame. Right. That's right. Well, now, um, whenever you go to vote and the polling person says Republican or Democrat, even though you may be a Democrat, you can still vote Republican, and it doesn't mean you've changed your parties. You can vote Republican because what you're doing is you're making your voice heard. Uh, and if you vote Democrat locally, you're not making a voice heard because there's nobody there to choose. The only the the only races that have any opposition are on the Republican ballot. Right, Carmen, yeah. yes, I hear you talking about that, and I appreciate that too. Uh, Beverly Department here, I said, what do you do? They said they pick up the Republican ballot because they want to vote in the sheriff's race and the clerk's race right. and all that. That's so right. they're staunch Democrats, but we're trying to stress that if you're a Democrat and you go in there and ask for a Democratic ballot, you're not going to be voted in any of the contested local races. So if you want to vote in the contested local races in May, you have to ask for a Republican ballot. So, and I'm, you know, this is why there's confusion. There's going to be confusion. I'm telling you, I'm trying to avoid that headache for those poll workers because Democrats are going to go in there and they're going to start yelling at those poll workers, where's the sheriff's race at? Where's the, where's the clerk's race? They're going to say, you don't have the right ballot and they, they don't understand. So okay. you have to get us, I'm trying to get that information out as much as I can and stress right. to people, if you want to vote in local contest races in May, you've got to vote Republican. That's because exactly there's right. no contested local races on a Democratic right. ballot. That's right. right. Which is totally opposite of the way it used to be 20, 30, that's 40 right. years ago. Well, it used to be you, the other way around. That's right. And, you know, my daddy uh, and mama are have always been Demo big Democrats. And uh, and I told them not too long ago, I said, now, you know, I'm vote I'm running Republican. And I said, if you're going to vote for me, you'll have <laughs> to vote Republican. And, of course, they said, well, you know what? I want to vote for the person and not the party. So they, you know, of course. Of course, they, that's the way I've always voted for the person exactly. and not the party. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But the early vote starts at Monday, so I just does. want to try to get that message out because that's where the confusion is going to start. It's going to be three right. weeks of confusion because people aren't going to understand. But if you want to vote for one of those three ladies on that 
Parker Court's race, you have to pick up Republican ballot. If you want to vote for John Carter or Toby Cameron, the contested sheriff's race, you have to vote Republican. I mean, so, I mean, Kevin Johnson's over there on the Democratic ballot for sheriff, but he's unopposed. He's going to be there on the November ballot. So, Francis Yergin in this morning, candidate for clerk of court. Just we got to tell folks ever so often because I was earlier. Francis Yergin in as, um, as candidate for clerk of court here in Wayne County. How's the campaign going? I know you had a meet and greet. One Very of those good. Symbols, a lot yes. of people there for that, a but lot of it's, it's there. a huge county, so that's what I ask all the time. I mean, how do you, I mean, people don't realize how big the county is, oh. but I sure the people running for office in, yes. a, in a county or wide race understand how huge the county is. That's exactly right, and uh, it's going great. Um, I'm going door to door, and uh, I try to attend as many of the functions that I can and greet people and, and see them, and um, um, I um, have got a some phone calls being made. Um, I've sent out some mail to, to folks too. And uh, so it's, I'm trying my best for personal contact, you know, and, but like you say, it's a big county and you just only have so much time and so many um, doors that you can knock on. So I know I miss some folks and uh, it's not intentional, but uh, you know, I, I do ask for everyone to go to the polls ask for a Republican ballot, and then when you get in that poll, find my name, Francis Bennett Jurgen, for Clerk of Court, and vote for me. How many employees are at the Clerk of Court's office here in Wayne County? I think there's about 11 or 12. Wow, I didn't know that. Well, you know, and uh, I know that... Yes, you just won't see all of them when you walk in the door there, huh? That's right. Well, they're everywhere, yeah. you know. But I do know that um, there was a study done of our clerk's office from the Carl Vinson Institute and uh, there were some comparisons between our clerk's office and other uh, counties that were the same size and that sort of thing and uh, th there are some areas in our clerk's office that we can um, maybe uh, readjust and uh, m help make our clerk's office run smoother Plus, it would save some money for our taxpayers that we do spend a lot of money in the clerk's office, too. And, uh, you know, one of the things I think that will help that is the technology. You know, uh, I know fax machines are used frequently, but I also know that fax machines are going to be obsolete in the future, too. And uh, so I think it's very important that we stay informed and uh, knowledgeable about the current technology that's available and uh, you know even what we've got today is going to be different than what we're going to have probably next year or the next year so uh, it, you know you just have to be um, willing to sharpen your skills and to learn that's the big thing okay oh yes kid i saw the time like i said early voting starts in may so when people go in and vote and they pick up the republican ballot and there's three ladies running why should they vote for francis urban I would think that um, caring is one, compassionate is one, uh, because whenever you come in the clerk's office, if I'm there, I'll greet you and find out well, what's going on with you. If you've got a problem, let's see if we can find out the solution to that problem. But um, I would like for them to vote for me because I think, and I want them to leave with a good feeling, you know, that, you know, I, I might want to come back to this office. So I, I want them to know, folks, to know that I, I care and I'm willing to work for you and be a public servant and um, just give, please give me that opportunity. Who, um, uh, what state agency overlooks the clerk court's offices in the state of Georgia? State agency, but well, now there's a clerks association thing, but mm -hmm. no, it's but there's the, no, it's the there's nobody of walks in from County. Atlanta that can investigate stuff and say, see how you're doing and all that kind of no. stuff there in the clerk court's office right. throughout the state right. of, of Georgia. Huh? No. Um, I asked Daddy one time, I, this was a long time ago, I said, Daddy, who is your boss? And he said, the citizens of Wayne County. And that is so true. So there is no state boss. No. Okay, there is no, is no state, state boss. boss in the clerk court's offices in the state of Georgia. Right. You okay. answer to the, the voters and the citizens of Wayne County. And so that's why I'm asking, just give me the opportunity and to show you I can be the kind of person that you'd like for me to like be. It surprises me because yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of state laws and regulations that you have to follow in a clerk of court's office. Is that correct? Well, there is. Yes. And it just seems like there would be somebody, some agency that would overlook that in case there was um, 
complaints filed, questions and stuff like that. Right. That's amazing. It, right. a, and we got three ladies running for clerk, of course, the incumbent, and then you and Pat, uh, each one of y'all talking about your strengths, your experiences, mm -hmm. and uh, what you would do there in the office. And what do you feel that uh, you, Francis, would do? I know that he just kind of asked this question, but I'm going to ask it from a different angle there. Okay. What that you would do? Um, on your first, let's say, first month there as the clerk of court, if you are elected? What would I do the first month I was there? Um, well, first of all, I'd look around and try and evaluate where we are so I can get myself on the same page as, as, as what the office is. And I would look at the needs, see, well, you know, where can we strengthen this area? You know, or what about this area? Maybe we don't need to focus so much on this area. Uh, see how we can save money. That's a big thing. See where the technology is that's available. Um, so that would be what I would do the first time. Of course, you know, when you go in January 1, you've got to be ready for court, too, you know, uh, because court doesn't stop to uh, let a new elected official catch up. So you've got to be ready to uh, have uh, jurors chosen if, if that's what's going on you know so whatever is going on in the clerk's office at that time you've got to be ready to step in and do it now whoever is a new clerk they go through a training uh in december it's 40 hours of training and you have to be certified to be the clerk so you've got to go through that training so that prepares you for what you're going to expect whenever you go in and i look at that training also almost like well every clerk needs this training because of the fact that how frequently things change but of course they have training twice a year once in november and once in the springtime too uh to for updates and that sort of thing yeah there's uh, is there like a person in the clerk of court's office right now who's second in charge in case the clerk of court uh the um, the person who runs the, the clerk of court's office is out for any reason there is a chief deputy chief deputy yes okay sure is so there's a chief deputy at each clerk of court's office yes. throughout the state of georgia yes okay mm -hmm. all right mm -hmm. who's our chief deputy doe proudfoot doe proudfoot uh oh i apologize to doe Irwin. Irwin. <laughs> okay. she just got married okay. i'm so sorry <laughs> you know you always call people by the name their maiden name or what you knew them the longest sport. Okay. How's Bert enjoying the campaign? You got him on the campaign? I do. I tell you what, he's going door to door with me. Freeman Bacon has a golf cart that he's decorated, and uh, Bert drives it, and he says, all right, go to this house right here. We we have had a lot of fun together, just the, the two of us in that little golf cart, too. So, uh, But it, it's been a, a good experience, and that's one thing I said that I, I, I want this to be uh, a fun campaign for myself. I don't want to get up in the morning and say, oh, it's another day or whatever. You know, I look forward to every day. I look forward to uh, different people that I meet. And uh, so I can share with them my my passion and my, my request for their vote. And how's Stetson doing? Is he making Daddy phone is calls? doing good. Is he on the phone? He is. He is. And he is doing good. And uh, and Mama's doing good. I got her doing some project work for the campaign. And we've always said that um, uh, Mama's the happiest when she's doing projects, whether it's taking care of Daddy or something else, you know, because she was in the bridal business for so long and That's right. had so many weddings to do and cakes to decorate and different things like that. So she is uh, she's doing really, really good. She's an artist and, uh, you know, uh, she's she's very talented so we i appreciate everything she's doing and, and daddy too they're both excited i'll go in daddy say how many more days you got you know, that sort of thing. So, <laughs> now you're officially out of the chamber now aren't you i am uh i'm, I'm back i'm a little bit back and forth right now because cheyenne mosley who is there she's excellent excellent um she I, I just can't leave her by herself right now uh not that she couldn't do it by herself because she could but um Christy Carter will be coming in on Tuesday and uh, so I'll be there for Christy when she comes in and try and get her acclimated to different things uh, I'm trying to get my office cleaned out because that's where she wants which I don't blame her it'll be up front where you see people when they come in and uh, and that's where I like to be it's where where you can see people but um, but anyway I am I'm just kind of in and out right now but, uh, did you have to give up this position to, to run, I or not. I was wondering, ask, I wanted to ask you about that. I, I did not have to. When I um, decided definitely this is what I wanted to do, I uh, explored other chambers to find out what policy was. Did you have to resign? 
And some of the policies in some chambers said yes. Some of them said no, you didn't. But the candidate or the employee of the chamber at that time said, you know, I just stepped down because I just didn't want to put the chamber in the position of being uh, criticized or, or whatever, you know. And uh, so, so that's the reason that, why that's, you did. That's why I did. Yeah. Plus, yeah. I needed the time to campaign. Okay. To, so uh, they want to put the, uh, the the members of the chamber in a you know, and the board of directors exactly. in a that's exactly situation right. there where people might think there's favoritism or anything. Exactly. That's okay. right. That's exactly right. Okay. Yeah. Figured that must have been the reason I just wanted to make sure. Right. That's it. All right, Francis, we appreciate you coming in this morning. Oh, you are welcome. And I brought you something. Oh, she brought gifts. I did. I did. I did. Look at here. I know. She brought gifts. Thank you very much. <laughs> we do appreciate that so much. We love gifts. Well, good. The you got to look. Better. You got to look and see what's in it. Oh, we got to look at it. Of course. Right. All right. All right, what is inside the gifts that she gave us here? Uh, toothpaste, toothbrush, candy. Yes, now the candy is because I care. All right. And the toothpaste and toothbrush is because if I'm elected clerk of court, uh -huh. what you will see is a smiling face. <laughs> so got to have them white teeth, huh? That's exactly right. That's All exactly right. right. All right, thank you so much. I thank remember when you. your sister came in one time to buy Benham, and uh, she brought in, you know, we always talked about the uh, the shrimp and the blue M&Ms. Yes, yes. She actually brought in blue M&Ms with a WYF on them. I remember that. <laughs> I, could, I remember that. I know, you can have that done to M&Ms. <laughs> All right, Francis, thanks for coming thank in. Francis, you. you're again thank candidate you. for Clerk of Court in Wayne County. Anything it. else, Bob? All right. All right, the world famous Butcher Bob Show brought to you by My Birch Ford in Blackshear. Also brought to you by Jess Supreme and Storage Out here on the Way Cross Highway. And by Je uh, Parker Insurance and Realty located on Macon Street in downtown Jessup across from the Heritage Bank. 105.5 FM and Jessup Big Dog Country. WIFO FM 830. Let's check in the latest news from Fox News Radio.